This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, we're now looking at the chapter on limited factor analysis and may combine decisions, uh, which are two types of question um, that use the same basic technique. That's why I put the two together. Uh, but I will split into two lectures. Um, this one is on limited factors. And then the next lecture, I'll show you how we can use the same approach to what we call make or buy decisions. Anyway, first to our limited factor analysis and look at example one. I'll use that to explain what the problem is and how we deal with it. We've two products there, A and B. And if I just talk quickly down A, the selling price per unit is 25. I haven't said this per unit. The cost, materials, $8 a unit, labour, 5 other variable costs, 7 uh, and fixed costs, $3. So total, $23, the profit, $2. Uh, B, different revenue, different costs, that shows a profit of $2 as well. Uh, and notice, those cost cards have been uh, prepared using absorption costing. They've absorbed the fixed costs. And rather importantly, remember that whatever the total fixed costs are, we'll look back at this a uh, bit later, but I, I don't know, the total fixed costs of the business might be 20,000. But do remember the total fixed costs will stay the same, whatever happens. Our problem is that uh, each unit of A takes two hours to produce and B takes one hour to produce. And we know what the demand is, so we know what we want to produce, but the total hours available are limited. And that's where the problem lies. That's what we mean by limited factor. That we want to produce 20,000 A's, that's what we can sell. We want to produce 10,000 B's. But how many hours would it need? 20,000 A's, they need two hours each, so a total of 40,000. Uh, 10,000 B's, each B needs one hour each. And so in total, we would need 50,000 hours. And that's our problem. We haven't got 50,000. Uh, for some reason, it's limited. We've only got 48,000. And so, what are we going to do? We obviously can't produce to meet demand, but uh, which, uh, how many of A's shall I produce? How many B's shall I produce? Given that obviously I want maximum profit, uh, but at the same time, we can't use more than the 48,000 hours. And what we do is this. First of all, we look at the contributions per unit. Because remember, since we're obviously going to produce less than we were hoping to, if ever you produce more or less of a product, total fixed costs will stay unchanged. What will change is the contribution. The more A's we produce, the more revenue, the more the variable costs. And similarly, the fewer A's we produce, the less the revenue, the less the variable costs, but the total fixed costs won't change. And so what is the contribution for each unit, uh, A, at 25, less the variable costs, materials, labour, variable, 8, 13, 20, is $5. Or quicker, of course. Remember, the contribution is the profit before fixed costs. Here, the profit is $2. The fixed costs were $3. Contribution, profit before the fixed costs, $5. And similarly, B, revenue less variable costs, the revenue 28, the variable costs, materials, labour, other variable, so 24 is $4 a unit. 
or again, it's the profit of two, add back the fixed costs, $4 a unit. So those are what are going to change as we produce more A's, more B's, less A's, less B's, the $5 and $4. At first glance, it looks, oh, A is the better one because it makes a bigger contribution. But the problem is the hours, that the hours per unit, every A we make needs two hours of machine time, every B only needs one hour. And think about it, it means that even though A gives more per unit, if you've got two hours available, you could either just make one A and get five dollars, or instead you could make two Bs. And two Bs, four dollars each, would be eight dollars. I'd rather do B. However, although there are lots of ways you could go about making the decision, it doesn't really matter, standardly to decide which is the better of the two, we look at the contribution per hour. Hour is the limiting factor. And so we say, how much contribution do we get for every hour we use? At A, for every two hours we get five dollars. So per hour, every hour used making A's will give us two dollar fifty. As far as B is concerned, Every hour gives us one dollar, uh, four dollars. We're getting four dollars for every hour that we use making bees. I've got limited hours. We want to use it in the most profitable way. And so B is the best at four dollars an hour. A is second best at $2.50 an hour. And it wouldn't matter how many products there were, there could be three, four, five products. But in each case, we'd work out the contribution we're getting per hour and rank them accordingly, which is best, which is second best, which is third best, and so on. And now we can decide what does it ask for? Our optimum, our best production plan. We've decided B is best. So we'll produce as many units of B as we can. But do remember, the demand is limited. The maximum we can sell is 10,000. So there's no point in producing more than 10,000 produce the maximum we can sell, I'll produce 10,000 bees. Uh, how many hours does that use up? At one hour each. It uses up 10,000 hours. Well, we've still lots of hours left. Remember the total hours were 48,000. We've just used 10,000 hours, and so how many hours are left? 38,000. We can't make any more bees because we wouldn't sell them. And so, <coughs> we'll move to A. And how many A's can we make? Each A takes two hours. And so working backwards, With 38,000 hours available, two hours per unit, it means we're able to make 19,000 units of A. And to see what we've done, rank however many products there are, rank them according to the contribution per limited resource, the contribution per hour. Go to the best one, make as many as we can, the limit is demand. Uh, once you've made as many as you can, go to the next one, which is A, and make as many as you can, and so on. 
If you'd still hours left, you'd go to the next one, C, D, whatever, until we've used up all the hours. Well, that's how we'll produce. Uh, the question also says, though, what is the maximum profit? Now, watch me carefully here. A trick that probably won't apply in the exam, but just could. First of all, what will be our total contribution? We've decided we're going to make 19,000 A's and 10,000 B's. Well, we know how much contribution we get from each. Each unit of A gives me $5. Each unit of B gives me $4. And so the contribution from A, 95,000, from B, 40,000, a total of 135,000. And that is the maximum possible contribution. You know, try any other levels of production. Uh, and provided that you don't produce more than you can sell and provided that you don't use more than 48,000 hours. That's the best level of production. It, that is the maximum contribution. And probably that's all that would be required. Although this question actually wants to know what the profit's going to be. Well, the profit, surely, you need to subtract the fixed costs. And I said right from the beginning that whatever the total fixed costs are, by definition, the total stay the same, whatever we produce. And so if the question said, oh, total fixed costs are 50,000, fine, subtract 50,000 and there's your profit. Here it doesn't. Now, this probably won't happen in the exam, but just in case, we make an assumption. If you look at the original cost cards, I mentioned earlier, they have absorbed the fixed costs. We went through all the absorption business um, way back in the lectures. But they've absorbed $3 a unit for A and $2 a unit for B. We assume that they prepared the budgets, prepared the cost cards, before knowing about the limited time. It's an assumption, but we'll assume that they did their costings before they knew that there was only 48,000 hours available. And think about it, if they didn't know about this limit on the hours, how many would they have budgeted on producing? Surely, if, you, if you're not limited on hours, you'll budget on producing maximum demand. Budget on producing maximum demand. So I'm nearly there, but make sure you are with me. When they did the budget, again, I'm assuming though uh, no mention was made of limited time, and so they budgeted on producing 20,000 A's and 10,000 B's. And when they absorbed the overheads, they assumed it would be 20,000 A's and 10,000 B's. Which means they'll have budgeted on fixed costs. They thought they were producing 20,000 A's and they absorbed $3 a unit. They thought they were producing 10,000 B's 
and budgeted for fixed costs on $2 a unit, which is a total of what? 60,000, 20,000. So they budgeted on fixed costs of 80,000. Now it turns out, of course, they can't produce in full because of limited time. Uh, we know what they ended up producing, 19,000 A's and 10,000 B's. But as I've said several times, if they budgeted on total fixed costs of 80,000, fixed costs aren't affected by the level of production, the fixed costs will still be 80,000, even though they end up producing less. And so what will the maximum profit be? 135 less 80, 55,000. Now that little trick on the fixed overheads is less likely. In the exam, if they want maximum contribution, we have it, 135. If the exam tells you what the total fixed costs are, if they say it's 80, they say it's 50, whatever, you just subtract whatever they are. But just to be safe, if you're not told, if they do have a question like this, then, well, think again about what I've said and make sure you're clear. All right, that's limited factor analysis. I said in the beginning, um, there are two types of questions that can be asked. The second one, make or buy decisions, which does rely on basically the same technique. So, uh, I, I said I will split it into two lectures, so make sure you're clear what I've done there. In the next lecture, I'll show you what we call a make or buy problem.